there were several speakers there and I had an opportunity to give the Seriano lecture on that topic as well. And, um, and so we discussed the clinical features as well as the pathophysiology of this uh, syndrome and the long-term consequences. Um, quite early in the pandemic, it became quite apparent that uh, there were significant neurological complications that were occurring in these patients who were hospitalized uh, from uh, COVID infection. And it was originally thought that all the neurological complications are probably related to end organ damage. Uh, that is very well true, but uh, only partially. Um, as the pandemic progressed, it became quite apparent that uh, there are specific neurological complications associated uh, with the infection. And now one can easily divide them into acute phase uh, that occurs uh, at the time when the virus is still replicating in the lung. Uh, and at that time, there's loss of smell in about 60% of the individuals. And if you examine them, you will find that 80% of the individuals probably have loss of smell. Uh, they can also go up a metabolic encephalopathy or hypoxic uh, brain injury. And, uh, and then some of them can develop strokes from a, uh, a thrombotic uh, event. Uh, and the patients do have hypercoagulability during the acute phase. Um, there are some individuals that develop uh, microvascular um, disease, particularly micro hemorrhages uh, throughout the brain, more focused on the gray white junction. And there are individuals who develop uh, long term complications. And that I think is of major concern uh, to neurologists because um, we have about 30 to 50% of individuals who had acute infection uh, will complain of long term symptoms. Uh, as much as a year after the onset of uh, the acute infection. And most of these symptoms are neurological in nature. And so considering the fact that there are millions of people uh, infected with the virus, we will be dealing with a huge population uh, that we've not dealt with in our clinics. We are not prepared as neurologists to be able to handle uh, this uh, huge influx of um, a, a new uh, neurological uh, manifestations. And these manifestations are of several different phenotypes uh, with uh, overlapping syndromes. One that have exercise intolerance uh, predominantly, uh, the others have um, cognitive and mood disorders. Some of them have acute uh, anxiety uh, or first onset of psychosis. Uh, there are uh, others uh, who have dysautonomia, and some have classical POTS-like syndrome. And then there's a fourth group that resembles fibromyalgia and other pain-like syndromes. And lastly, there is a smaller group of individuals who develop hearing loss, tinnitus, and vestibular disorders. Currently, the pathophysiology is not entirely understood, but we think that there's persistent innate immune responses um, that may be driving the phenomenon. Autopsy studies show that they are uh, infiltrating macrophages, although it's very hard to detect the virus itself within the brain. And if it is present, it's present in very small quantities and only few individuals. So largely, it may be an immune-mediated syndrome. So early diagnosis and treatment could impact the course of the illness. However, this needs to be done in the context of clinical trials. At uh, NIH, we are in the process of initiating a clinical trial for that purpose. Thank you.